So there we go. <laughs> Programming conference, and I can't figure out how to work the slides. Um, I'm Sen. I do film photography, uh, so a lot of work in the darkroom, and was unsatisfied with darkroom timers, which is what I'm going to talk about here, designing a better alternative. Uh, I also design a lot of blinky art things, and pretty much just this one thing that doesn't blink, which is what I'm going to talk about here. So, existing darkroom timers uh, have a display, but you can't use it in situations where you have to be in complete darkness. Uh, the only real interaction you have with them in the darkness is you feel around for the knobs, you turn them all the way to zero, and then like six clicks forward for 60 seconds, and then it beeps once a second to tell you that it's still timing. And if you're in there for like hours at a time, beeping every second is not the most pleasant thing. So, oh, I don't have the video here. <coughs> Are you actually getting any audio? Yeah. 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 Yes? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you push the button, it times for many minutes, and you get beeping every second for hours at a time. It's not super pleasant. So I wanted to design a new device uh, that used as much automation as possible so you didn't have to reset it between each step. Um, your hands are in chemical baths between all these steps too, so the timers end up like coated in various chemicals, which is not ideal. Um, and it's just having to fumble around in the dark uh, between each step is not great. So I wanted to design something that you could set up in the light and it would time everything in the dark without having to interact with it very much. And I wanted something that also didn't beep at me every second for hours at a time. <laughs> So I started thinking about how to design it, and there are a bunch of challenges to designing it, especially the darkroom I work in is a multi-user darkroom, so there's always different people in there doing different processes. So storing programs in a flexible way is hard. Um, my first thought was having like a directory for each person so they can store their own programs that they do, um, but as you get more people, it's just going to be a pain scrolling through. Uh, intelligible speech output in open source turns out to be hard. Uh, there's Festival and a couple of other ones, eSpeak. None of them are super understandable, and especially listening to them for hours at a time gets annoying pretty quickly. Uh, Off-the-shelf hardware also has a lot of blinky lights on it. Pretty much everything has like bright blue power LEDs these days, which is not great in the dark room. Um, a lot of our equipment has electrical tape over all of its power lights, but I wanted to design something that wouldn't require that ideally. And timing is uh, obviously time critical. Uh, cloud services are not always great at re replying very quickly, and if I was using cloud for any of this, I wanted it to not be uh, critical, so I didn't want the whole thing to stop timing if the cloud service was down. So I ended up building it with a bunch of off-the-shelf parts that I found in Toronto, uh, clouds, lasers, and a lot of Ruby code to tie it all together. So hardware-wise, I used a uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, which if you haven't used it before, it's a little uh, circuit board, maybe this big. They're like $30, they run Linux, and you can do a lot of cool uh, like real-world applications with them, uh, this being one of them. There's a barcode reader attached to it to actually read the programs. The processes are all stored in the darkroom on sheets of paper with all of the instructions, which chemical goes in at what temperature for how long. So I ended up using a 2D barcode printed on that to actually store the whole program so that you don't have to store them in the timer. You just print them on a piece of paper, you show it to the reader, and it knows all of the steps. And I built this panel with some buttons on it just to say, okay, go to the next step now. Uh, and the panel's mounted so you can just hit it with your hip so you're not getting it coated in strange chemicals, which is probably better for everyone. <laughs> Software-wise, uh, it's all Ruby-based. It could be written in anything. I just like using Ruby. I'm pretty comfortable in it. 
Uh, it's a modular architecture, so that I can test it on my laptop using uh, my keyboard as the buttons and uh, console output instead of speech, and then load that code into the darkroom with a different config file and have it use actual speech output and the physical buttons uh, for controlling it. I'm using a cloud speech generation service called Sarah Voice. Um, it's free for like small numbers of words per day, but pretty much any personal project falls within their limit. Uh, it's really good speech, it's like very intelligible. And I get around the cloud limitation there by rendering it beforehand. So it renders all the speech into MP3 files before the process starts. So if there's any errors, you know about it before it's time critical. And then it just plays those MP3s at the right time through speakers. And I wrote a JavaScript-based web tool to generate the barcodes that get printed on each of the sheets. There's an example of one of the sheets here with all the instructions and a barcode in the corner, and this is what the Aztec barcodes look like that we're using in this project. So that barcode contains basically this CSV file, which says each step, how many seconds to time it for, what to display on the LCD, and a couple of other fields uh, to indicate whether or not to turn the lights on the unit on. So if you're working on steps in the light, you can actually see the steps that are happening. And there's a little demo of it here. <coughs> that did not work at all. Sorry, there is a screen here that was displaying everything and then it stopped. Okay, I'll just have a small demo then instead of trying to go full screen. So, basically you scan the barcode against the wall it knows all of the steps, what the process is called, how long each one takes. And you just hit the button, it starts the process, it plays a like, wood block sound once every five seconds. Um, I played with the timing a bit and that seemed like the best, it's not annoying, uh, but it still lets you know that it's working. The display's on for this one because it was just a demo uh, process in uh, tray-based processes it would normally be off. And then it warns you when there's five seconds left and then tells you when you can take the stuff out of the chemicals. <laughs> and then it knows what the next step is. You press the button, it starts the next step, and it just works through the steps that you put in the barcode one by one until you're done. Um, it also can control the LCD on it, so it turns the backlight off when you're supposed to be in the dark, and it turns it back on when you're in a light step, which has actually turned out to be useful because it helps you find the light switch, which could be a problem before. <laughs> it's just a little bit of light, but it's useful enough to help you find where you're trying to go. All right, that's it. Uh, full information, code, everything is at that URL. Uh, it's all on GitHub and hardware specs and everything. Uh, I try to document all of my projects such that anyone else could replicate them if they wanted to. So pretty much everything is up there. And thank you.